What the hell is going on, people? This is Periodic, and you see the title of the video. We are jumping back into Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle to go over whew, what we know so far of the GT Celebration Dual Global and Japan Campaign. Goku, Vegeta, this most likely means Extreme Z Awakenings. I shut it down wherever power is stored Being real is in the past, watching cowards get on, 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 on It ain't kill me, so it's making me stronger And these bite size rappers now sets in my heart so as you can see, here is the um, announcement for the GT Super Saiyan Kid Goku. I'm perfectly willing to take you on. A new Dokkan event is coming soon. And right next to it, huh, finally someone worth the effort of putting down. That wasn't the greatest Vegeta, but a new Dokkan event is coming soon as well. This is Super Saiyan GT Vegeta Super Saiyan 1, Super Saiyan 2. I don't really know because they don't differentiate too well in GT. Uh, his spikes are just like, Super spiky, right? I would assume that's Super Saiyan 2, but I'm not really sure. This is obviously Super Saiyan 1 because of how chunky his hair is. Yeah, yeah. This is like Super Saiyan 2. This is Super Saiyan 1. Anyway, uh, Japan, boom, also got the same exact announcements. So a dual celebration coming to the game, uh, Golden Week. This should be a shared celebration. I would be shocked if it's not. Um, people were making this point like weeks ago that like, hey, this... Everything's kind of ending at the same time on both versions. This could potentially, uh, you know, usher in a shared celebration, kind of like the worldwide celebration or, um, you know, uh, what else is a shared celebration? Uh, the crossover events and stuff like that, right? Uh, typically, everything has the end at the same exact time, and then you can begin both celebrations at the same time. And on, uh, you know, normally, that's not the case. Normally, you have... Global following their own schedule and JP, obviously they're the originators, so they're going to go at their, you know, the beat of their own drum, uh, and then Global is going to kind of try to catch up, uh, or at least go at the same pace that they always have been. So uh, very, very interesting. But what's even more interesting is obviously this is essentially saying that, hey, they're going to get a um, dual Dokkan, or we will get a dual Dokkan festival, right? So it's going to be a transforming Vegeta, it's going to be a trans forming Goku. Uh, I'm thinking it's going to be them starting at Super Saiyan 2 and then going straight to Super Saiyan 4. Uh, and maybe it's via an active skill. Maybe it's just a transformation condition. Um, most likely it's an active skill because nowadays they do active skill into transformation. And then once you transform, you can get another active skill, right? Like I don't see them having an issue doing that with either character. And they should be particularly strong. Um, I will talk about last year's Golden Week characters um, and why I most likely would not base your, um, you know, your thoughts on what these characters will be like off of them. Okay, uh, that's that's number one. Number two, um, this should be insanely hype because it's Dragon Ball GT, and I've told you guys before, Super Saiyan fours are my favorite. Uh, form in the entire series just because it's so different than the Super Saiyans and it actually makes sense right like Goku and Vegeta and any other Saiyan um, being from planet Vegeta being uh, beings that are you know gruff and like tough and rough and and uh when the moon comes out they turn into like apes like giant silverback gorillas you know uh, massive baboon type monsters uh for them to then lose their tail and go into quotation marks super saiyan and now all of, all of a sudden they have blonde hair and blue eyes it's just like what wait that like aesthetically that doesn't really make any sense right it's it's kind of like this weird like hold on why why do they have blonde hair and blue eyes that's kind of strange uh but super saiyan 4 makes perfect sense because it's like yeah of course they would master their uhuzaru powers in a you know a normal human type not obviously human but in like a normal body form and so they are able to 
you know, take all of that power, harness it inside, their body transforms a little bit and they become this massively powerful being, right? Uh, without the size. So they're able to take all of that size and turn that energy into just uh, power, uh, you know, inside of them. So that's super, super cool. And them having the tail, which makes complete sense. Um, it's essentially like what they did with uh, Broly in the Dragon Ball Super movie. It's the Uhuzaru form, just as a normal person. It would have been kind of cool if they grew just a little bit bigger, but whatever. It's not a not a huge deal. Um, so to me, that is really cool design. And the fact that it's super, they just went with the other way. Like, oh, we're just giving blue hair and red hair and silver hair. It's like, oh god, dude, come on. This you're literally just like color pasting uh over their normal hairstyles you're not even changing their hair their hair is exactly the same like god goku uh and, and god form vegeta that's their normal base form hair uh you know super saiyan blue is literally just their normal super saiyan hair just recolored and then even mastered ultra instinct and ultra instinct and stuff it's like all right he's base form and then he goes super saiyan and you just recolor their hair and put some aura around them it's kind of whack honestly uh, obviously it's like hype moments in the anime but the actual design is like so lazy and stupid anyway uh with that said let us take a look <laughs> after i just trashed it um let's go ahead and take a peek at who they will most likely and i say most likely i'm actually like i'm kind of like 80 percent um firm on this that they will be extreme z awakening super saiyan 4 goku and super saiyan 4 vegeta because this is a godsend for global. Uh, this dual celebration, this uh, golden week that we're going to be getting alongside of Japan, uh, this is actually the best thing that can happen because it's no secret that global's been in a tailspin for the past few months. Errors upon errors, mistakes upon mistakes, garbage compensation after garbage compensation, dead celebrations, missing content, moved content to other campaigns, uh, trying to fluff out certain campaigns, um, just a lack of um, care with this particular version of the game. Uh, this is the best thing that can happen to it because what they what they will be catering to Japan, they have to give to Global in this particular regard, uh, unless if it's like a God of Destruction event or something like that. But what would be really awesome if they dropped the same name update alongside of Golden Week for Global, but that's neither here nor there. So uh, let's take a look at these two Super Saiyan 4s because with Japan going absolutely insane with their Extreme Z Awakenings recently, uh, and Global getting a taste, getting a little taste with Strength LR Broly, uh, these guys could definitely be next. So you're looking at Super Saiyan 4 Goku in his form right now. He's a Strength Super Lead, 120%. Uh, you can definitely see that going up to 130% easily, right? Uh, super attack causes immense damage. Defense 30% for six turns. I can definitely see attack and defense 30% for nine turns. And then passive skill attack 150%. 25% uh, chance of dodging super attack and countering with tremendous power. On JP, that's actually 30% chance. Um, I don't think they have added... Maybe they did implement that change already but uh, last time i checked they didn't but anyway let's just say 30 percent from now on um extremes awakening he could easily be 150 percent attack and defense uh with a 50 percent chance of dodging enemy super attack and then maybe like gains more gains one extra key with every rainbow orb he gets right like something crazy like that and then you have vegeta who honestly is actually insane right now like he's really good even to this day uh cause immense damage greatly lowers defense so that's a 50 percent uh debuff i can definitely see him cause immense damage raises defense greatly lowers attack and defense passive skill attack and defense 120 percent bump that up to 150 medium chance of dodging enemies super chink uh super uh, attack put that to 50 percent and then also give him that rainbow orb so he's kind of like the um the year four super saiyan fours right that would be really cool and then obviously the links would stay the same and stuff like that and he would also be 130 percent lead that would make a lot of sense if they decided to give both of these guys extreme z awakenings and they haven't been slacking they haven't been lacking they have not been holding back on their extreme z awakenings recently they've been absolutely insane so i would not be surprised if they go just nutty absolutely nutty on um 
on these characters. Now, let's uh, take a quick peek at last year's Golden Week celebration uh, because this thing started, um, I believe Golden Week starts like the 29th or the 30th and it goes until like the 4th or the 5th of May. And this was essentially the messy full power campaign. They didn't call it Golden Week, but it is what it is. Uh, so you had a few legendary banners coming back, which was like, all right, who cares? Uh, you had a login bonus. You had special missions as always. Then you had this dual Dokkan festival, which was the... Uh, uh, transforming go tanks and exchange boo coming out and then you had you know the events getting new stages you had um some super sales you had uh th- an extreme z awakening uh you had uh, blah 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 new story event old story events coming back easy a's open new chain battle new infinite dragon ball history uh Dogen events open a bunch of story events coming back ultimate clash uh super vegeto got his extreme z awakening at that point uh and wow that was just what a year ago yeah a year ago super vegeto got his extreme z awakening now when you look at this right you're like okay uh, go tanks exchange boo i mean they're pretty good like they're they're solid characters but they're not like top five characters and turs don't confess to yours there's much much better characters than they are uh even though you know super saiyan go tanks is fantastic with the his capability of receiving high attack and high defense his 70 percent chance to stun which is absolutely insane greatly raising his defense so he's a defensive g and then you look at this uh tech boo with the 40 percent damage reduction high attack stuns uh on a 50 percent clip has the chance to dodge and then when they go into super after what seven turns super boo massive amounts of attack 50 percent defense uh gaining that crit seals just like doing a whole lot and then this go tanks ridiculous amount of attack at that point um does a ridiculous amount of super attacks 50 percent chance to stun like these dudes are really really good but it takes a long time for them to get good uh so because of that they're kind of like yeah they're, they're pretty good so they're not bad they're, they're pretty pretty uh i'd say like maybe on the outside of the top 10 dokkan fest to urs just because it takes a, a, them a little while to get going um but you wouldn't say like oh my god this was like the best dokkan festival i've ever seen for golden week so you may think to yourself like well i'm not expecting these super saiyan fours then to be particularly good i don't think this goku and this vegeta would be pretty good well I would disagree with you because last year is when they were still being run, uh, or at least at this time, uh, by a different uh, director or a producer. Uh, this was kind of like the transition when they were getting out of their old philosophy. And the next month, uh, June and, um, and uh, particularly towards the end of the year, and then with the starting of 2021, you saw the new direction that Dokkan Battle was in for uh, Japan. Not for global, but for Japan. And things took a change for the better, for the much better. Now, if we look at the worldwide celebration, this is just a little uh, tease of it. Now, a lot of people were like, oh, there wasn't any content in the worldwide celebration. I disagree because you have to consider it was a countdown. It was part one and it was part two, right? And if you look at the countdown. You had tickets coming in. You had login bonus. You had this cool little Dokkan festival uh, for tickets and stuff like that, which was not bad. You had a returning campaign. You had a new legendary challenge campaign for the um, tech um, Hercule. You had uh, chain battle, infinite Dragon Ball history. Uh, Super Battle Road was open. Dokkan events. uh, Some easy A's came back. And you know, XP was four times. So that was just in the countdown. So you had a bunch of events, new Dokkan Festival uh, banner and all that stuff, right? Ticket banner and all that stuff. Then you had part one where you got more login bonuses, more missions, uh, a campaign for like a raid type of thing, the ridiculous dual Dokkan Festival of two of the best cards in the game, if not the two best cards in the game currently uh, over on Global. You had the new Dokkan stages, that um Dokkan festival still there you the memorial dragonstone for every single you know dragonstone you had used you ended up getting this memorial dragonstone to use on the banner which was ridiculous god dragonstone uh crazy discounts on the sales um the age meet event which was insane new boss rush uh sns campaign hidden potential all open 
Treasure Hunt came back, launches Treasure Hunt. Virtual Dokkan, um, you know, Ultimate Clash came back. Part 2 was here as well. So you had more campaigns. Uh, new LR in the Majin Vegeta, one of the best LRs in the game, or at least up there. Extreme Z area for free-to-play units, which is great. New stages of story events. Um, easy A for a free-to-play LR. Extreme Super Battle Road. Infinite Dragon Ball history, uh, Golden Weekend missions, uh, and then a um, a raid type of campaign, right? So if you take all those three parts into account, then you're like, oh wow, that was actually pretty solid. And as you can see on global, we ended up getting 900 Dragon Stones in total. That's a lot of Dragon Stones in total over that uh, over that two part, you know, plus countdown. So. I can only assume that because the six-year anniversary was even better than the worldwide celebration. Six-year anniversary, the consensus is pretty much that it was the best celebration of all time. I can assume that this golden week is going to be either on par or even better than the six-year anniversary. I would say it's probably going to be on par with it. Uh, and if that's the case, then this is a massive win for Global, particularly with how dry and how uh, piss poor the content and the treatment of the Global player base has been recently. This is just going to be an absolute W if we share anything with Japan because they've been getting it so good recently and it's about time that we get ours. So I'm very happy for this. If you want to stick around and see all of this, uh, you know, amazingness going down, you got to be subscribed to the channel. You can click that blue join button, become a boomer elite, a boomer champion like Wolverine Gaming, or you can do it the free to play way. Go ahead and gently rub that sub button, gingerly ring that bell button, lovingly. Kiss the like button. As always, this is Periodic. See y'all in the next video.